Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I know I just posted this super long wrap up, um, but I wanted to go ahead and post a first impressions of Not That I Could Tell, a novel by Jessica Stralster. This book, oh, I don't even know where to like begin. So let me start with the very beginning. Okay, so I joined Book of the Month because they have a lot of um, great thriller mysteries, adult novels, and that's also one of my favorite genres other than contemporary. So whenever they have like a thriller mystery, I like pick it up. I heard that this was kind of like Big Little Lies, as in it kind of covers a lot of families. Um, Basically, according to the synopsis, um, drinks in hand, a group of neighborhood women gather around a fire pit to enjoy a Saturday night of laughter and shared secrets. The single newcomer, the perfect mom, the newborn parents, the military wife, the almost divorcee. By Monday morning, one of them is gone. An innocent night of fun has shocking repercussions. And not that I could tell, the next page turner from Jessica Strasser. So it kind of, you know, deals with a lot of families and stuff like that. But the number one thing is it's just not interesting. For a thriller mystery, I mean, you expect it to be like a page turner. I have worked on this book for weeks, weeks, and I am only on page 151, chapter 20. The writing is just not captivating. It's just not gripping me. There are a lot of women um, storylines in this book. All the different ladies that were at the bonfire that night. But they kind of get all confusing. Like you don't know, is that the woman? Or is that the woman? Or is that... Like the story just kind of runs together. And... It'd be nice to find out what happened to this lady and also her kids. Her kids end up, like, disappearing along with her. Um, and then her ex-husband moves back into her house, like, while the investigation's going on. And then the one lady ends up kind of, like, the neighbor befriends him. And I'm wondering if that's going to be a romance. Um... But it's just kind of odd. I feel like they're not really concentrating on what happened. It's all of these other little mini stories about all of these other women. Um, apparently there was this bonfire where they were drinking wine on Monday morning. The cop comes to one of the ladies' houses like, hey, have you seen so-and-so? I couldn't even tell you the only name that I remember out of this entire book is Izzy. And I bet you that's because, yes, that's the last, like if you turn to where I am in the book, the last person I read about was Izzy. But I couldn't tell you any of the others' names. Kristen, Paul, Clara. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know who any of these people are. Um, I don't know the name of the woman that went missing. I know Paul, I believe Paul, is her ex-husband. Or they're not divorced, but they were taking a break and they were separated. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of confused about everything that's happening. Um, things don't really seem... I don't know what the story is trying to do. I don't know if it's trying to delve more into the stories of all of these individual families or women or groups of people, or if it's trying to solve this like disappearance. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the disappearance. What happened? Why did she up and vanish? And I feel like every chapter that I read, I'm getting no closer to the truth. And I don't understand how what these women do in their day-to-day -day lives has to do with this disappearance. Um, there is a little bit of, at the beginning of each chapter, I forget exactly what you call these little things like before the actual story starts. It's kind of one minute, it seems like you're hearing from the person that has disappeared. And then in other ways, you're reading about um, these letters one of several unfinished and unsent letters. So you don't know, is this how we're finding out? Otherwise, like, just give me those and I'll go from chapter to chapter and read that little part right there and like hopefully figure it out. And it does say in here, as the police investigation goes from a media circus to a cold case, the neighbors are forced to re-examine and 
re-examine what's going on behind their own closed doors. And I think that's basically what it's about. We're still kind of in this media circus right now. One of the women of that was there, um, she like babysits this other woman's like older daughter and the older daughter unrelated to the case wants to like start this um, Yellow Springs. That's the name of the place where they live. Um, this Yellow Springs Gazette type thing, kind of like a neighborhood monthly newspaper thing. And um, I guess this woman used to work in publishing or she did or I don't know. And um, then she, the girl ends up like overhearing a conversation between the investigator and the husband and she publishes it and she puts the lady's name on it as like editor or something like that. And it's like this big thing. Um, that was like recently what happened to the story. I couldn't tell you what the beginning was about, to be honest. Um, because it's just kind of all over the place. I don't feel like the characters are very clear in my head. I don't feel like the author's purpose in writing this story is very clear to me yet. Um, the story itself sounds interesting. I love a good disappearance story. Um, but... I wanted to focus on that, you know, since that's the part that I went into it for. Um, but like I said, it feels like it's focusing all on these families and their children and how the wives and the husbands are um, reacting to this happening and how some are just kind of blowing it off and some are like, what happened? And they're trying to like involve themselves with the investigation. The writing, the writing is boring and it's not making me want to continue. Um, and also, like I said, the characters being like muddled and stuff like that, it just kind of makes it like, eh. and I have heard, I am not the only one that feels that way. Um, I've never read anything by this author before, but it doesn't seem to be a debut. It just says the next page turner from her. And this is not page turning. The other books that could hold my attention more like the premise of the story sounds so good, but the execution of the story is just... I don't know. I kind of want to continue to see like if my opinions change after I finish it, but it also feels at the same time like it's going to be one of those books that I force myself to finish and then it doesn't end up being that great and I'm going to like regret it because I'm going to be like I could have read four other books in the time that it took me to read this one. But there's something that's making me say I'm temporarily DNF DNFing it. Um, so maybe I'll go back to it, not really sure. But those are my first impressions halfway through the book. Um, Cause I feel like I don't know much still. I feel like nothing has happened. I Anyway, that's all of my first impression thoughts for Not That I Could Tell by Jessica Strasser. Sorry if I'm saying the name wrong, but I hope you've enjoyed this first impressions. I'm going to try to do these from time to time when I'm like first picking up a book, when I'm first into it. So it's not like a full review. It's just kind of like what I'm initially thinking about while I'm reading it. And a lot of you did um, like that sort of video when I did that for Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. So I'm going to try to do them from time to time. Of course, according to the book and what I'm thinking will be different every single time. But that's all for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!